After Transformers became a box office smash during the summer of 2007, grossing over $709 million worldwide, discussions about where a sequel could potentially go began. And in late 2007, pre-production commenced on this sequel which as we know would eventually become Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. During Revenge's pre-production, Michael Bay wanted the film to be a globe-trotting adventure, and was attracted to the concept of the Transformers having been on Earth for a long time. As a result, he settled on the idea of Egypt playing a significant role in the story, due to its historical and cultural connection to human civilization. As the script started to take shape, the filmmakers needed to figure out how our heroes would actually get to Egypt. And so Osprey was born. As you guys can see, he has a kick-ass robot mode design that fits right in with the design philosophy that the first film established. Thanks to the artwork, we know that his primary weapons would be the rotor blades on his arms, which he could either store away as depicted on his left arm, or actively deploy as shown on his right arm. And this weapon is pretty cool since we don't really get to see the Autobots use a recognizable part of their vehicle mode as a weapon, which is a trend that we see a lot with the Decepticons. Bone Crusher is a prime example of this phenomenon since his Minesweeper arm in vehicle mode becomes his iconic claw in robot mode. However, this trend is not limited to Decepticons who turn into military vehicles, since Mixmaster, who funnily enough was originally planned to be an Autobot, was able to use his mixing drum as a shield, which is pretty freaking cool. We also kind of get to see this trend with the Autobots in the case of Jetfire and Jolt, since Jetfire's cane, which is the front landing gear of the SR-71, was able to turn into an axe. As for Jolt, on the other hand, since he turned into an electric car, he was given electricity powers. However, you could classify that as more of an ability than a recognizable part. But circling back to Osprey here, his rotor blade weapon is pretty freaking cool, since he could use it to dismember his opponents, or potentially even use it as a shield. And if you're a fan of Fall of Cybertron, you know exactly what I'm talking about, since Vortex was able to use his rotor blade as a shield for Bruticus. However, this isn't the only weapon that Osprey has, since we can see that he has several missiles on his back, which he could use to fire at his opponents. Now, with Osprey being, well, an Osprey, this would mean that his robot mode would be fairly large, since an Osprey is a troop transport vehicle. And well, thanks to this very old Revenge of the Fallen scale chart that has the Autobot Mixmaster, RC Combiner, and Convertible Bumblebee on it, stay tuned for when I cover all these guys in detail, we can see that Osprey stands at 30 feet tall, making him bigger than Optimus Prime. Now, this isn't the only artwork that we have of Osprey, since we have access to one more that was a face study for the character. And I really like this head, since to me at least it looks fairly youthful and expressive, especially in the and if we compare it to his previous head, we can see that the face study appears to be an evolved version, since we can still see the nose and this blue part on the forehead. Now, something very interesting here is that in the full body artwork, Osprey appears to be sporting a visor, while in the face study he doesn't. However, we can see all this space around his eyes that has a blue trim, and if we fill in this space, it kind of looks like a visor. Now, if this is what the artist was going for is unknown, but I think there's a solid case that could be made for it. Now, something that you might be wondering is if this character's sole purpose was to transport Sam and friends to Egypt, why would the filmmakers go with an Osprey? And well, besides the fact that Ospreys are pretty freaking cool, I think that the reason lies with Michael Bay's relationship with the military. You see, unlike most directors, during his extensive career, Bay has been able to film real military hardware, which is a luxury not all directors have. This is because of Bay's relationship with Philip Strubb who was the head of the Defense Department's film and television liaison office. And this organization basically oversees efforts to provide United States military assistance on various movie projects. And thanks to Strub, Bay was able to become the first director in the world to film real F-22 Raptors, as well as V-22 Ospreys. And as we know, Bay would go on to make Starscream in F-22, so it might stand to reason that he wanted to make a Transformer out of an Osprey as well. And though this unfortunately never ended up happening, Ospreys would go on to play a significant role in both Transformers Dark of the Moon and Transformers The Last Night. Now something that you're definitely wondering is why Osprey got cut from the film. 
And, well, the only explanation that we have comes from Osprey's artist, Ben Proctor, who served as the art director for Revenge of the Fallen. According to information on Proctor's website, Osprey was designed as an Autobot who took the form of a V-22 Osprey. However, the character was ultimately scrapped when the decision was made to give Jetfire teleportation powers, thus making Osprey's transport capabilities no longer needed. Now, this explanation is very interesting since it calls into question how big of a role Osprey was going to play in the story. As we know, his main function was to transport Sam and friends to Egypt. However, we have no idea what he was going to do before and after this. But whatever it was, it must have not been too important since the filmmakers were able to drop him from the film entirely. The only thing that we know for certain is that giving Jetfire the ability to teleport was a change made at the tail end of Revenge of the Fallen's production. And we know this thanks to Rick Alvarez, who was the former creative manager for the Transformers franchise. Now, this begs the question, on why the filmmakers decided to give Jetfire the ability to open space bridges if Osprey was intended to be the one to take the gang to Egypt. And well, unfortunately, we just don't have an official answer to this at this time. But if I was going to take a guess, maybe it was cheaper for the filmmakers to just teleport everyone to Egypt instead of shooting a scene where they were flying to it. However, this is just my best guess. Now, though we unfortunately never got to see Osprey appear in the film, he would still get a few toys, since he would get a transforming Legends class figure, as well as a non-transforming Robot Heroes figure as well. And something that's very interesting here is that these these figures were both released in the first wave of their respective assortments, which is typically reserved for the main characters, so maybe his role in the film was bigger than we initially thought. Now, it's worth noting that when it comes to his toys, Hasbro would go on to designate Osprey as Springer, which is the same name as the Autobot Triple Changer featured in the 1986 classic, The Transformers The Movie. This is because Osprey was a placeholder name for the character until a Transformer name could be attached to him. And this isn't an isolated case, since Mixmaster was originally designated as Cement Mixer, Crosshairs was originally called Corvette, and RC used to be named Motorcycle. Now, interestingly enough, instead of being a bluish gray, Springer's toys would depict him as being green. It's unknown whether Hasbro intentionally chose this color scheme to align him more closely with his G1 counterpart after his removal from the film, or if there was an alternate concept art that depicted Springer in green. It's also worth noting that Hasbro would use the head that was depicted on the full body image instead of the one on the face study. This would lead to Springer's design in the Titan movie comics to be based off his Legends class figure, and in those comics he would partake in several adventures until he was ultimately taken out by Bludgeon. Now, though we never got to see Springer in Revenge of the Fallen, he was at one point planned to appear in Dark of the Moon, and we know this thanks to this very old scale chart for the film. Unfortunately, it's not in the best quality, but as you guys can see, he's right here next to Ironhide and Sentinel. Prime. And if you guys thought that Sentinel was big, Springer looms right over him. Now I think that I speak for all of us when I say that it's a real shame that Springer never made the final cut because he would have had so much potential. I mean, just imagine him fighting off Starscream in order to allow the Nest soldiers to wingsuit into Chicago. That would have been freaking sick to see. Unfortunately, at this time, this scale chart is the only piece of information that we have on Springer's involvement in Dark of the Moon. However, I have a crackpot theory that Springer was intended to be the quad rotor Osprey that we see in the film. I guess Springer just had better things to do tonight than appear in the Bayverse. So with all that said, it's a real shame that we didn't get to see Springer on the big screen. However, it's highly likely that we will actually get to see him sporting this exact design one last time. You see, fairly recently, the designers behind the Transformers Studio Series toy line created a subline called Concept Art. And this line is all about making toys out of character designs created for the films that never made it to the silver screen. So far, we only have two. One of them is the fantastic unused Megatron design from the Bumblebee movie, and the other is the unused Rumble design from the same film. It's only a matter of time until this line will start doing some Bayverse characters, and I cannot wait for them to get around to Springer. With him having to be bigger than Optimus, but smaller than Jetfire in order to scale properly, I can easily see see him being a leader class figure. And if they do get around to this guy, I really hope that the designers can incorporate the Osprey's VTOL and STOL capabilities. And this shouldn't be too hard since Incinerator was able to do it, and his figure was made all the way back in 2007. So yeah, that's why Springer was cut from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Do you think that he should have stayed in the film? Feel free to let me know in the comments below.